Right now, about 25% of the power we use in our homes in South Dakota is generated by two nuclear power plants in Minnesota. Northern State Power constructed the plants in the 1970s. However, they might not have been built if it weren't for a project in South Dakota called Pathfinder. It was a small nuclear power plant built near Brandon in the early 1960s. In tonight's Eye on Kelland, Tom Hansen shows us the incredible story of South Dakota's first and only nuclear power plants. It all started in the 1950s with a program called Atoms for Peace. At United Nations headquarters in New York, United States President Eisenhower arrives to make a proposal for the constructive use of atomic power. It was President Dwight Eisenhower's idea to allow technology being used by the Navy to power submarines to become available for commercial purposes. Power companies, including NSP, or Northern States Power, saw the potential and ramped up research. Today, there are 58 nuclear power plants operating in the U.S. This is not one of them. It is the Angus Anson power plant near Brandon, which generates electricity by burning natural gas. But in 1966, this same site was home to South Dakota's first, last, and only nuclear power plant. The plan for the plant was submitted to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission and Northern States Power in August of 1959 by Alice Chalmers Manufacturing, which around here most of us know as a tractor company. At that time, Alice Chalmers had an atomic energy division. This is a rare photo of the plant under construction taken on November 2nd, 1960. Ten months later, they loaded the reactor vessel into the reactor building. Like all nuclear power plants, Pathfinder Supercore heated water, which turned into steam, and that steam turned turbines, which generated electricity. Pathfinder incorporated a technology called the steam superheater. Jim Wilcox is a historian and former Excel employee. And I think we determined that the, the economics panned out quite well. And the steam superheater turned out to be a little bit more of a problematic. It was a technology ahead of its time and, and it was not been adopted by any other nuclear plants. In South Dakota, just under half of our power comes from the hydroelectric plants along the Missouri River. Pathfinder might have gone on to power homes in South Dakota. However, repeated failure in the steam separators caused the plant to shut down and eventually led to the decision to close the plant. I think we would classify it as a research project. You know, it began construction in the late 50s, went online in 64, and then operated for three years intermittently for testing purposes, for research purposes. Not only did NSP gain knowledge about generating nuclear power, it gained something even more valuable from Pathfinder. NSP were able to take employees that had worked at Pathfinder and transfer that knowledge and the skills that they had learned operating Pathfinder when we opened up the two nuclear power plants that are still operating today in Minnesota, the Monticello plant and the Prairie Island nuclear plant. The Minnesota plants built in the early 70s use a slightly different technology and are much larger than Pathfinder. Now, a natural concern when people find out that there was a nuclear power plant near Brandon is, what about the radiation? The site, we have a federal regulator, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and they've come in and, and said that there's no residual radiation at the plant and it's not deemed a nuclear site any longer. This report filed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Advisory Committee on Nuclear Waste in 1990 talks about the radiation levels at Pathfinder being so low, there was concern that workers would become too relaxed in their safety precautions. The report urged the commission to monitor the deconstruction very closely. And the reactor vessel itself was removed in 1991. The rest of Pathfinder was taken down and moved in the early 2000s. But then the piping and all of the other equipment, which was at a level low enough that could be handled physically by people without any protective gear. Pathfinder was a source of pride, not only for the workers, but for the community. At the time, brochures promoting Sioux Falls mentioned the atomic plant as a place to see, along with the battleship memorial. While the Big Sioux River can provide enough water for a small nuclear power plant like Pathfinder, there's no way it could handle a larger modern day plant. And while nuclear power is a part of the city's past, it's very unlikely it will ever be part of the city's future. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Tom Hansen. And visitors to the Angus Anson power plant near Brandon can see a 1-6 scale model of the Pathfinder nuclear core.